Hello, in the previous part we worked on our player movement and in this part we'll be working on some camera controls. So let's get started. First of all, let's create an empty game object, reset its transform and then name it to camera rig. Then in a hierarchy, let's drag our main camera onto our camera rig to make it its child. Let's then reposition our camera to make it closer to the player. We'll then see that when we rotate our camera rig, our camera orbits the player, which is exactly what we want. Next, let's head over to scripts and create a new script called third person camera. First of all, we'll need to get a reference to the player's transform so our camera can track the player. Let's then create a method called orbit player. First of all, let's set the camera's transform dot position to the player's transform dot position so that our camera will track the player. Next, let's create a float called camera sensitivity, which will control how fast the camera will rotate. Let's also create two floats called yaw and pitch. Yaw will represent the camera's rotation on the x-axis and pitch will rotate the camera's rotation on the y-axis. Next, back in orbit player, let's set yaw equal to itself plus input dot get axis mouse x multiplied by camera sensitivity multiplied by time dot delta time and then let's set pitch equal to itself plus input dot get axis mouse y multiplied by camera sensitivity multiplied by time dot delta time we'll also want to have a limit on how far our camera can rotate upwards and downwards to do this let's create two more floats called min y and max y which we'll be able to set in the inspector then let's set pitch equals to mathf.clamp pitch min y and max y this will clamp pitch between our minimum y value and our maximum y value finally we want to smooth the camera's rotation so let's add three final fields the first one will be a float called rotation smooth time The next will be a vector free called current rotation. And the final will also be a vector free called rotation smooth velocity. Back in orbit player, let's set current rotation equal to vector free dot smooth damp. First of all, let's pass in our current rotation. Next, let's pass in a new vector free consisting of our pitch and your ref rotation smooth velocity. And finally, let's pass in our rotation smooth time multiply by time dot delta time. Finally, let's apply a rotation using transform dot Euler angles and set it to current rotation. We'll be calling our orbit player inside of the late update method. Let's head back into Unity and check this out. Let's drag our new script onto our camera rig game object. Let's then drag in our player's transform and set our fields. Once again, these are the best values I have found after experimenting, but feel free to experiment with these values yourself and change them to suit your needs. Then when we hit play, we'll notice that our camera now rotates as the mouse moves, which is great. However, we'll notice that our movement is not relative to the camera. 
So if, for example, if I rotate the camera in the opposite direction of the player and press the up key, our player still moves forward in a global Z direction. Also, our camera can clip through objects and walls. Let's head back to Visual Studio to our player movement script. Let's set a field for our camera rig transform. Then, in our move method, let's create a vector free called relative move vector and set it to quaternion dot angle axis camera rig dot Euler angles dot y comma vector free dot up multiplied by our original move vector. So this vector here will now take into account our camera's rotation when moving the player. Next let's change our other four references to move vector to our new relative move vector instead. So great, that should be all the code we need to get our player moving relative to the camera. Back in Unity, let's assign our camera rig transform. Then when we hit play, we'll see that when I press forward, the character moves forward. And if I flip the camera in the opposite direction and press forward, our character now walks in the direction the camera is facing, which is great. So great, we've now got our camera controls down and our player now moves relative to the camera's rotation. Next, we'll be figuring out how to fix the clipping issue. Before we head over to Visual Studio for the last time, let's select our environment game object, and then go to layer. And then let's create our own custom layer by clicking add layer. In any of the empty boxes available, let's write environment. Then let's select our environment game object again, go to layer, and now select environment. Finally, let's let yes change children. Let's discuss how we'll handle our clipping issue. First of all, we'll cast a ray from the center of our player to the camera. If there are no objects of the environment layer between our player and the camera, then we don't need to take any action and the camera can stay in its initial position. However, if the ray does hit an object and this object is of the environment layer, then we we'll want to change the camera's position to the point of contact. However, if we place the camera at the exact point of contact, then the camera will still be inside the object. To fix this, all we need to do is shift the camera forward slightly in the direction of the player. Let's head into Visual Studio and get this coded out now. First of all, let's create an integer called layer mass index, which we'll assign in the inspector. Then let's create a transform called camera, a vector free called initial camera offset, and finally a float called initial camera distance. So firstly, let's get our main camera game object by typing camera equals transform dot get child zero. As this script is attached to the camera rig, by retrieving the zeroth child, we will get the main camera game object. Next, let's set initial camera offset to camera dot local position. And then let's set initial camera distance to camera dot position minus player dot position dot magnitude. Below our orbit player function, let's create a new function called adjust camera clipping. First of all, let's create a ray cast hit called hit. Then if physics dot ray cast. First of all, let's pass in player dot position plus vector free dot up. Next, let's pass in minus camera dot forward then out hit initial camera distance and then one two lesson signs and then layer mask index so firstly we are passing in our starting position 
which is player dot position. Since the player's origin is at their feet, we add on the vector three dot up to shift the origin to about the centre of our character. Then here we specify the direction that we want to cast our ray in. Here we want to cast our ray in the opposite direction of the camera. Next, we type out the hit. This will store the information of the object hit within our hit object. Next we pass an initial camera distance. This is the distance of our ray. And next, this expression will define the layer mask which will be affected by this ray. So all of this code together casts the ray from the player's position to the camera. Then, if there are any objects in between the player and the camera, we want to set our camera dot position to the point hit plus camera dot transform dot forward multiplied by a small value, for example 0.25. Here the camera's position will be set to the point hit by the ray. By adding on camera.transform.forward multiplied by 0.25, the camera will be shifted ever so slightly forward, which will mean that the camera will not be on the exact point hit. Else, meaning that no object was in between the player and the camera, then let's assign the camera's local position to the initial camera offset. Finally, let's make sure we call our adjust camera clipping method in late update. Back in Unity, let's assign our layer mask index. To check out our environment index, we can go to layer then we can see here that it says the index is free. So let's assign this to free. Then when we hit play, we can see if we walk up to an object, then rotate the camera, then the camera moves in front of the object rather than clipping through it. Also, if we go up to a wall, it will go in front of the wall. And with that, we now have our very own fully animated third person movement controls. The finished project is available on GitHub, which link for us in the description. As always, thanks for watching this tutorial, and I'll see you in the next.